It's 
she wasn't crying. No tears were coming out of her eyes. And then she read her rights and said that she wants an attorney. And look, the lieutenant is like, okay, so I can't ask you any questions at all. And even though she asked to see a lawyer, she was like, she was not shutting up. She talked and talked and talked for hours. She says, I was so out of it. I was like, it's in self-defense, but I, I killed him and can you come to the scene? I was raised really, really Christian and murder is a sin. It just seemed like she was constantly babbling like that. She continues, she's like, you have really pretty teeth. Did you, ha did you have orthodontia? Like, this is not the things that you should be talking about while you're being questioned for murder. She talks so much that the officers were wanting to leave the room, said the detective. She said, if I have to go to jail, can you shower there? Or do you just get really dirty? And then she asked what will happen to her if she goes to jail. Although she was read her Miranda rights, Shino voluntarily spoke to the police. Uh, Miranda rights, I think, is referring to the right that she doesn't have to cooperate. She can just stay silent until she gets a lawyer. When explaining the details of their relationship, she described Ryan as very vain and that she gave him the nose job that he always wanted. In the police video that you can find um, on YouTube, she says, I knew he was gonna die or have a completely deformed face. He was very vain and wants to get a nose job. Just kind of, just that kind of person. And I shot him right there. I shot him right here. She kind of shows it. I gave him the nose job he wanted. This is why he says after her. Shot him in the head. He fell onto the ground. He was like laying 
arrest unable to meet her bail. Prosecutors argued that the motive for the murder was that Boston wanted to permanently end the couple's relationship. Defense attorneys continued with their contention that the shooting was in self-defense and that Hoopers was a victim of domestic abuse. As part of their case, the prosecution led by Michelle Snodgrass put on text message evidence that showed Hoopers' obsession with Boston. Several witnesses, including Ryan's family men members Audrey Bol Bolte and Hoopers' former cellmate, testified for the prosecution. Carissa Carlisle, through whom Boston met Hubers, testified that her cousin was trying to avoid conflict with Hubers, and she read a series of text messages she had exchanged with Boston prior to his death. Boston's stepfather, Peter Carter, testified that the day before his son's death, Ryan confided in Carter about an upcoming date with Bolte, and was afraid to tell Shina about it. The date was for the following night on which Ryan was killed. Bolte stated that on the night of the murder, she and Ryan planned to meet at a Milford, at a Milford Ohio bar for drinks at 9.30, and that she had been looking forward to it, but, but then Ryan had failed to show up. Um, Shina's for, former cellmate, Cicely Miller, also testified where she said that Shina bragged about killing her boyfriend, saying that she laughed about shooting Ryan in the face and giving him the nose he always wanted. Miller also said that Shina discussed legal strategy with her, saying she was going to plead insanity, but she was too smart because she had the IQ of Einstein. So she was going to plead battered wife syndrome. Shina did not take the stand in her own defense, but relied on her police interrogation tape in which she maintained the killing was in self-defense. A Kentucky juror recommended Shina spend 40 years in prison, but a judge has spent, yeah, 40 years in prison, and then she must serve 20 years in prison, well, and then she might be eligible for parole after 20 years. Um, Standing and 
she said that she immediately stopped and grabbed her and gave the biggest dog like the mom gave her the biggest dog um, yeah and he says that he, he still loves Ryan and he's her lover in the clouds which is really sad so on April 23rd 2015 after her day deliberated for five hours the jury found finds Shina guilty of Ryan's murder and you know the 40 year prison sentence was recommended then the attorneys were arguing for a new trial and they were not allowed um, because they were not allowed to present evidence and witnesses uh, that will corroborate that Shina had killed and then the attorneys also were like Shoina is a victim of domestic violence which would reduce the amount of time she would be required to serve before becoming eligible for parole but uh, under state law she would be required to serve 85% or 20 years of her term um, whichever was less before becoming eligible but her lawyers would require her to only serve 20% of her sentence before she could be released through using um, the argument that she was, you know, going through domestic violence. And after four months of being convicted, her sentence um, convicted, she was sentenced to 40 years in prison with parole after 20 years after the jury's recommendation. Uh, and a judge also declared that he didn't believe that she was a victim of dom domestic violence and that he considered a sentence even even bigger than 40 years. On August 25th, 2016, her conviction was actually overturned on appeal when one of the jurors in her murder trial was revealed to be a convicted felon. So that didn't really work out for her. And China was convicted of murder during her second She was sentenced to life imprisonment with parole eligibility up to 20 years on October 18, 2018. And on her second trial, she actually gave lurid details of her sexual relationship with Ryan. And the defense built its case around the assertion that Ryan was an abusive boyfriend, again going in with the domestic violence. And after of deliberation another jury was like you're guilty of murder she was sentenced to life imprisonment you know 20 years possibility of parole and she is serving a time at Kentucky Correctional Institute for Women right now and she will be considered for parole in 2032 so that's a shame story like it, it, it's it's so crazy um there's this interview um i wanted to show you with um with an ex cellmate of shyness and she like talks about her character she basically um holly nivens is her name she says there's a lot of things that Shina would do to get attention. Um, she would run out of her room naked to get attention from the guards. And then Cicely Miller, which we talked about, said male inmates would come in there and serve. And she would come out there in a white tank top, no bra on, and her panties. And they would tell her, Miss Hubert, you need to get dressed. They'd say, Hubert's do not talk to the inmates and she'd ignore them and try to talk and you know what you're doing what's your name um yeah so she's definitely like nothing is right up there nothing nothing is right <sighs> she I think they featured her on many like TV shows about um, criminals and stuff. So, yeah. 